then uh, automation moving on to analytics and then finally achieving uh, the use of AI. Uh, to speak further on this topic, we have Adam Arion. He's the head of data analytics and financial model modeling at DCFU Bank. Uh, are you with us? Yeah, uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, good afternoon, morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, allow me to share my screen, and uh, then we can kickstart. Okay, uh, you let me know if you can see uh, my screen. Okay, now um, I'll start with um, creating uh, an effective AI framework. Uh, I think it is also important uh, for us to understand uh, some of these new technologies, because one, it's quite it's one of the challenges as to why uh, some of these new technologies, AI, ML, and other emerging technologies like robotic process automation, uh, do fail uh, because. Uh, we fail to understand uh, what they really mean. Uh, just maybe a quick definition of what uh, uh, artificial intelligence is. It's basically uh, mimicking uh, human intelligence, uh, we, which has quite a number of subsets where machine learning or what we call ML is but. And uh, ML is basically around um, building models um, uh, for prediction or for casting uh, any given use case. Uh, it also expands to what we call uh, deep learning. It goes to neural networks and so on. So it fits within a field, um, within the new discipline that we are calling data science, uh, which is amalgamation of all uh, different dimensions uh, within the analytical world. Now, speaking of the... Uh, of, of, of analytics, uh, I just have a question that I want us to think through, uh, to think about. Uh, imagine, um, uh, have you ever imagined of the number of data that is generated on a daily, okay? Uh, given the new technologies, internet of things, uh, the, also the population growing within the, within the different economies, have you ever imagined um, the number of data that is being generated? Uh, that aside, uh, do you ever ask yourself a question? Uh, how much of that data is actually analyzed for decision making? So from research uh, that was made um, uh, by uh, Statica, a uh, projection was made that uh, by the end of this year, we shall have reached about 97 uh, zettabytes of data and uh, about 180 uh, by 2025. Uh, same uh, research shows that we shall have reached about 171 uh, by the scientific world. However, um, uh, from the Guardian, uh, from the Guardian, it is indicated that only one percent of the world's data is actually analyzed. So what this means is that the majority of the data that we are holding as institutions uh, or as governments are not are not being used for decision making which is quite uh, critical um, uh, given, the, uh, given the, the benefits that come uh, with leveraging on data uh, for decision-making, um, uh, for decision-making. Okay, now uh, um, going to the, uh, to, to, to the, to the topic um, again, um, I just want us to, to, to understand the different benefits that we would derive from artificial intelligence, machine learning, what we call advanced analytics. And um, for banking, for financial services specifically, uh, banks in specific, uh, if you're, to, if you're to, to serve your customers better or to create a good customer experience or better customer experience, uh, there's, there's nothing more than leveraging on your data. Because our current customers uh, want to have personalized products, Okay, personalized services, and I think it's it's only uh, through understanding their behaviors, uh, their transaction activities, 
where they stay, where they live, that we can only uh, provide these services and products. So it's only leveraging on data, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the advanced analytics aspects that we can provide better customer experience. As financial services, we are highly regulated. And of course, a non-compliance uh, to the regulatory requirements uh, uh, invites penalties. And uh, uh, if you look at the, the compliance regulation, some of them uh, require uh, financial services to, to rely on data. And uh, some, of, some of the processes uh, therein are, are quite lengthy. And, um, and uh, I believe you, you could only rely on automated um, uh, solutions uh, to, to have better compliance or to comply uh, with regulatory uh, regulations. So to say, an example is like fraud detection. How do you ensure that you identify fraud even before it happens, okay? Talking about prediction. Uh, it's only empowered by having uh, AI or machine learning uh, models running in your environment that you can ably tell a uh, behavior or fishy transactions that are happening that would be fraudulent uh, with a, a minimal um, uh, with a minimal um, uh, margin of error. Okay. Then, of course, uh, as financial services, we are um, we are coupled with quite a number of risks. Uh, looking at the top risk, the top risks within uh, within financial services, uh, the pillar one risks, um, as per the ICAP, uh, talking about credit risk, talking about market risk, uh, operational risk, okay, and so on. Um, uh, an example is credit risk, whereby you are, I mean, it's the biggest risk I believe that that financial services hold, and uh, for you to mitigate to mitigate that risk, there has to be leverage. On, um, on, uh, on analytics, okay? Uh, at a point of application, are you able to tell that a certain customer uh, will be defaulting or is at high risk of default? And um, uh, you could only tell uh, with high level of confidence uh, if, you, if, you, if you apply advanced analysis in terms of machine learning uh, in your application scorecards or application models that would learn and, and learn from the existing uh, customers who defaulted after onboarding them and, and, and give you a flag uh, either to reject, accept, or refer some of those applications. It also speaks to, to the behavior. Yes, you've onboarded some of these customers. Uh, along the way, behaviors change, okay? Then you have to, you have to, you have, to have signals, uh, what we call in, in the banking field, early warning signals, okay, that this customer is potentially at risk of defaulting, how are you going to be able to tell that if there is no, uh, there, there's no reliance on data and analytics? And of course, we should also note uh, that these advanced technologies, AI, ML, and um, I mean, advanced analytics technologies, their bloodline is, is around data. So it's important that we have, um, uh, we have quality data, we have reliable data uh, for us uh, to be able to uh, rely on it. Okay, for 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 better decision making, quite a number of uh, other other um, uh, um, uh, use cases around analytics, talking about productivity. How do we improve our productivity as financial services? How do we cut costs? Okay, and um, how do we make uh, profits uh, with, uh, while leveraging on that? Of course, when you when you mitigate your risks, you're not going to be hit, uh, for example, by cyber attacks because you can easily tell. Um, you can easily monitor your operational risks, okay? Talking about productivity, automation of, 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 of processes uh, that take long, uh, cutting off all those bottlenecks, talking about data and analytics, um, okay? And insights for timely, uh, time, to anal time to decision making is, um, is, is made faster because uh, you are relying uh, on, on analytics. Now, but of course, um, uh, for you to achieve uh, those benefits, you, you must have a strategy uh, that you're following as an FS, a financial service. And uh, this strategy should be, uh, its backbone should be an agreed framework, uh, which should be in sync or in line with your, with your corporate or what we call the business strategy. So if there is misalignment, of course, uh, you'll be uh, working in the dark. So to say, um, uh, uh, the approach that I believe, or I believe that can help us achieve 
um, uh, or realize benefits from artificial intelligence and the advanced technologies. One uh, is we have to first understand uh, what is our current strategy um, as an organization? I mean, is it still relevant? Uh, what are our objectives and what do we intend uh, to achieve? And uh, of course, the next question is, uh, what are the enablers that we have uh, uh, that could oh, in place that can help us achieve our desired objectives? So of course, if, um, if, if, if you realize that one of the, your enablers is, um, is maybe artificial intelligence, you know, machine learning, advanced analytics, it could be uh, uh, digital, digital platforms, you know, um, uh, cloud technologies, then of course you have to have a strategy for the same. Okay, of course, within the data strategy, uh, the very first thing, even before uh, you think about the strategy, you have to have a framework in place. Okay, uh, whereby decisions that you make uh, within uh, your, your, your data or AI, AI framework uh, should inform on what strategies you're going to uh, put in place. Okay, and this all speaks to governance and um, uh, governance is the backbone of, of most or even all uh, business dimensions uh, uh, within, within an organization. So you should have your data governance or AI governance um, a spot on, okay, in terms of the quality of the, uh, in terms of the data quality frameworks, okay, in terms of, um, uh, the, in terms of the frameworks, in terms of the roadmap, in terms of, um, uh, uh, in terms of uh, the quality of your data, confidentiality, integrity, uh, what we call the CIA around data. I should should be spot on. Now, um, within the framework, um, this is just um, uh, what I believe is the to have or, or the to have, but it can be expand expanded to more than this. Uh, within your AI framework, you should think about what platform, okay? What platform am I going to have my my technologies running on? Is it so your decision uh, span around? Is it going to be uh, running in cloud? Okay, or is going is it going to be on prem, and this is this is also dependent on your tech, on, on your strategy as an organization, and it should also be aligned uh, with your information technology strategies. Okay, uh, you should also think about the cost, the cost element. If you're to go to cloud, how much would it cost you? So these are the decisions you're making as an organization, and how much time would it take you uh, to imp, uh, to implement your solution on these platforms? Because time is critical and it informs on how fast you can make decisions from the from your analytics or uh, achieve the benefits that come with artificial intelligence and analytics. Talking about do you have a competitive advantage? Why do you have a competitive advantage on the on the different platforms? And of course, the risks that come uh, with the, the platform that you choose. Of course, the next within your within your framework would be the tools. Uh, what tools are you going to be? implementing on your platform? Are you going to be relying on open source uh, open source tools? Are you going to be uh, relying on vendors? Are you going to be uh, relying on in-house development? And this also speaks in terms of cost, okay? And also what you desire to achieve as an organization, okay? And of course, the skill sets that you also have, and you have the right capacity in place, or you would want to source out um, uh, for consultancy or, or vendor support in terms of the tools. It also goes ahead and talks about the, the team that you have um, as an organization, the in-house team. Is, is it well, um, is that it have the right capacity in terms of implementation of these technologies? Or you would, you would prefer uh, to use the, the consultant approach. Then of course, looking at the business processes and of course here what we ask ourselves, what are those uh, business processes you would want to start with? Okay. Um, Quite a number of business processes we have in financial services, talking about customer customer service. And also, also this also speaks to the strategy. If your strategy is about customer obsession, okay, then uh, your, your target uh, business process to start with is maybe customer experience as a, as a, as a domain or as a business process. And, um, and you should ask yourself a question where you have a competitive advantage, same. Then the next would be, uh, what would be your business capabilities? Uh, are, are you looking at enhancing uh, your customer experience, your customer service? Are you looking at enhancing your risk management um, uh, approaches? Are you looking at enhancing your productivity as an organization? Okay, 
same also speaks to your 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 entire uh, business strategy and of course your structure i mean do you have the right structure in place i'm talking about the data structure do you have um all the required um uh, 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 roles in place talking about data architects um uh, data engineers data governance um experts you have data science in place uh do you have the leadership uh, in place and i mean is there buy-in so all these decisions that you are making here are within the different uh, framework uh, aspects from what we call an ai strategy and it's centered around uh, the people that you have talking about the teams it's centered the, uh, around the processes okay uh it's centered around the technologies that you would be uh, deploying on your uh, desired uh, platform so that uh summarizes the uh the, the the data or the ai strategy that um uh, you would want to um uh, build on to achieve uh, your desired objective as an organization then of course this is continued uh, speaking about the technologies uh, we've seen that uh the resources uh, do you have the right skills what gaps so these are some of the questions that you ask yourselves what gaps skill gaps do you have in place do you need to refill to fill them or you'd want to have a consultancy come in uh i mean uh, are you is your organization aware of um, uh, your current uh, implementation because what we should take uh, note of is that um, uh, the failure of most of these uh, technologies uh, is because there's no proper awareness and uh, i mean research shows that uh, uh, if there's no awareness or or buying uh, of, of of these technologies they, they run a risk of failing and most most of them have failed because one organization don't understand some of these technologies and how to implement them and the entire organization uh, is not aware of the benefits or even uh, some of these technologies, what they are all about and what they intended to achieve. And that speaks to, to the strategy. But now the next is, um, I, want to look, I want us to look at um, uh, what are those, uh, how would you go about this in terms of an architecture? And it's just a top level uh, or generic uh, approach that an organization would take in implementing um, an AI an AI strategy, and uh, it, one you should you should you should know uh, how are you going to acquire uh, the data. But of course, the first question is understanding uh, your strategy. What are your different use cases? Then the next would be how then do I uh, get this information or this data? Uh, and um, if you do not have the data in place, uh, the, the next question is how then do I uh, gather this information uh, is it uh, something that i get i can get uh from third parties is it something that i get i can get from uh, social media platforms you know um uh, and of course the next question would be then how do i store this data and process it for purposes uh, of analytics and uh, how do how then do my uh, end users uh, or the, uh, the, the 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 team responsible or who these use cases are built for access this information and interact uh, with the insights uh, from it so again uh it it starts with uh, the management of the data okay and uh for you to ensure that you have a uh, quality data in place uh for uh, for for, <clears throat> for for decision making your your master data management uh, must be spot on okay are you are you looking at having it at an operational layer uh, within your architecture or you you wish to have it at analytical layer so for operational layer uh, uh master data management this is where uh, you are deploying your master data management solutions uh this could be technologies at a point um uh, i mean to your operational systems an example would be at your core banking system it's interacting maybe with your digital platform or uh, uh, a platform a digital platform okay so data is sourced from some of those systems then uh, before it comes to a storage environment you have uh you have a, a, an mdm in place that gives you uh what we call the golden record okay then now that data can now come to your environment or your data lakes for for analysis then of course uh the next layer would be how then do you uh, load this data into your platform speaking about the different uh, the different pipeline at uh, the different um uh approaches uh, are you going to load this data 
having your ETLs, okay, or is it real time data, for example, fraud, if your use cases around um, uh, streaming data, uh, what technologies are you going to uh, have in place? So there are quite a number of technologies. So you, you go ahead and assess a, quite a number of technologies that would fit uh, within uh, your use case and uh, within your, your architecture. Then of course, the next would be how then do you warehouse, uh, warehouse this data uh, in terms of data lakes, uh, and remember, we spoke about uh, platforms. I mean, is, is, your, is your data lake going to be on-prem? Is it going to be uh, in cloud? Uh, OK, um, uh, what data are you going to ask being financial services? Of course, there's that data uh, uh, that you're not going to let go to the cloud uh, because of some regulations that you, you have as, 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 as states, OK? So you, you, maybe you're going to have a hybrid. You have both an on-prem data warehouse and a data lake for some data that goes to the cloud. So the decision is based on one regulatory requirements uh, in terms of data protection, and of course also your desired uh, objective in terms of the strategy. Then of course within the same layer, uh, we look at the analytical layer. Uh, then how are you going to avail uh, the insights um, or the AI, the ML outputs the, to the different consumers? Okay, for uh, are you going to build um, dashboards? You know, are you going to to deploy models uh, on, on, on applications, you know, for streaming data, are you going to, uh, to, to, to also build application and how are you going to be communicating this real-time real data um, uh, to the intended users? So within each of these uh, dimensions, uh, within the desired framework, the desired architecture, there are quite a number of technologies that you would think of. Uh, I'll not mention them, but within each of these, you're going to come up with a, you, you have to, have a technology and these technologies have to uh, be able uh, to communicate uh, with each other, okay? Uh, interoperability is important when you're choosing uh, our technologies and it's also important to look at the cost, the cost element in terms of, of technology and also usability. I mean, in terms of scaling um, and in terms of if you're going to have a vendor, have a technology in place, they should be within your strategies, how they are going to share this information, I mean, share the knowledge uh, with your uh, with your employees uh, at the financial service, okay. So that informs on the on the high level pipeline. Uh, if you're thinking about having an AI uh, an AI platform uh, in place, um, you should think about think about some of these these important aspects uh, within uh, your architecture. Uh, thank you all. I uh, will invite any questions there. Mike, over to you. Hello, uh, sorry about that. I think my connection is a bit uh, shaky. Yeah, thank you for those insights. A uh, quick question is, how do you deal with the fears that AI that's incoming would uh, would be replacing jobs. I think that's one of the key things. I think that the, the players who have been trying to adopt AI have been facing is uh, where staff and other resources are pushing back because they feel like their jobs have been made redundant. Yeah, I can take that right away. I think what is important in all um, implementations, uh, change management is quite, quite important. So, um, 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 and, and it starts with understanding some of these technologies. It's a role uh, of uh, a change, a change management team uh, to give comfort, okay, to the to the to the uh, employers who who have that fear that hey, look, this is coming to um, uh, to enhance or to increase your productivity uh, as employees, and um, uh, this should be managed within the change aspects within the project management. And uh, you you don't wait at a point uh, to, to, to ambush some of these employees with uh, some of these technologies. So you should walk walk the journey with them, and uh, that way, I believe uh, there's going to be appreciation and uh, the, the benefits uh, within some of these technologies.
Uh, thank you for that insight. Uh, we're now going to move on to our speaker just before our lunch break. And uh, the topic they'll be covering is cyber risk and digital adoption in the financial institutions. This presentation will be led by, by Henry Mwiki, who is currently the 